So if you want me to go somewhere, don't tell me to take uh, 197 and Highway 80 and 19E and tell me to go right down there about two or three miles somewhere along in there and there's a big red barn and turn by it. And I like them landmarks that I can see. I, I like the landmark of when I got saved and uh, the landmark. Of the, I, I just, uh, I thank God for them and the memories that we have. Anyone else have anything tonight? We're going to read the first chapter of the book of Little John over in the back of your Bible, 1 John. We're going to read that chapter tonight. Some reason or another, we feel like that's what the Lord would have us to read. I believe that. Uh, I believe. I, I believe that God's always had a plan from the very beginning, and He knew what the plan was. And I believe the. I, I, I say a lot that uh, the greatest thing that a person needs is the Lord as their Savior, and the second thing that the person needs is to to pray. And try to be in the Lord's will. I'll tell you, if we get uh, if we get in those two places, we'll find ourselves uh, being at the Lord's house. We'll find ourselves praising the Lord. We'll find ourselves fellowshipping with the Spirit and with the people of God. I believe that uh, I, that God knows the hearts of people, and I believe He knows uh, what we what we really want, what we really need. Uh, to help us in First John chapter one, uh, we're going to read that chapter. I don't know exactly. There's about ten verses. Then we'll read the first two verses of chapter two and uh, look at those tonight for just a few minutes. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and, and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy might be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the precious word, the good singing, those that's made their way out. Lord, we praise you tonight for the spirit of the Lord. Lord, how we praise you for the spirit tonight that, that uh, uh, indwells in our heart and takes us into the word of God and and Lord's always present to show us and help us and to guide us through the storms. And Lord, we just praise you tonight, Lord, that you're our Savior. And Lord, we, we want to uh, strive, Lord, to walk close and stay close to you, uh, Lord, each day. Lord, that when the time comes and, uh, Lord, there's a great need in our life, we want to be able, Lord, uh, just to turn to you uh, and cry out to you, knowing, Lord, uh, uh, that you're hearing our cry. Help us tonight, Lord Jesus, as we look at these uh, verses for just a little while. That you do for us, Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise for it now. Bless your word and help your servant. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Now, as we said, I believe that uh, John, I believe this is one of the 
more touching, intimate stories that there is in the Bible that uh, the Lord inspired John to pin down because he wanted us tonight. It's uh, it, and it, this is uh, this is the best way that I know uh, to to understand. Uh, sometimes uh, is the fact that me and my children. Now, church, the Lord, His plan, His desire, according to the Word of God, He said it's not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Therefore, the Lord sends the invitation out to whosoever will. The world can say what they want. The world can run their mouth. They're going to anyway, so it doesn't matter. But tonight, church, we need to know that the Lord, the invitation for salvation is there for every individual. But it doesn't stop there. The Lord doesn't want me to just get saved and live. He wants me to accept Him. He wants me to stay in His Word, directed by the Spirit of God in prayer. He wants me to know what I need to do, and we can be that way if we want to. It's up to us. As I studied through Corinthians this week, looking and studying and thinking, they are uh, many times uh, in Paul's writings that he talks about the believer, the one that, that loves the Lord, the one that uh, they pray and they study the Bible and they go to church and listen to, the, to the, the gospel hymns and all the things that we can so that our inner man can grow, that we can uh, understand more of the Word of God so that we can maybe, just maybe, be a help to somebody else. <coughs> But there's all kinds. There's all kinds. You know, the Bible teaches us in Corinthians that there are those that are saved so as by fire. Now, some people don't understand that. My understanding of it is, is that they are individuals that get saved. And I, I, I know some of them. Uh, I, and it can be uh, many different things that attribute to this. But individuals that get saved and they never grow. They're babes. They're babes. We, uh, me and Denise, we was a pastor in a church once there, and uh, there was a several in it that was, I mean, I, I don't claim to be no <laughs> know-it-all, uh, but there was several individuals in the church that was uh, was just very misled or uh, failure to understand. And boy, we just went into a Bible study and a Bible study and uh, uh, God just blessed me real good and He helped them. And uh, you can know and you can understand and you can walk with God. Go back and look at the Word of God. Enoch walked with God and was not. I mean, come on. The Bible is plain when He tells us that we, we can be as close to the Lord. I've heard old preachers preach down through the years, most of my life. Listen, don't pray and ask the Lord uh, uh, for more of Him. We just need to give Him more of me. Let me die out. Let me die out so that Jesus can live in my heart. The more I understand, <coughs> the more I understand, the older that I get, the more I read the Word of God, the more I dig in the Word of God, I see how much that Jesus loves me. I see what He did each day stronger, and that's what it's all about, seeing what He's doing for us, helping us to understand the Word, helping us to draw closer to Him. This is a love affair between us and the Heavenly Father, and the closer we get, the more zeal, the more excited that we get to tell somebody else about the goodness of God. I don't believe it's my place to run around and tell people they, they're lost. That's, that's not my place. But it is my place as I go from day to day to tell people what Jesus has done for me. How much He's helped me. How much He's blessed me. 
And brother, this, this chapter here, in the first two verses, you'll find what made it possible when Jesus came in St. John. And the Bible said He became the Word. And brother, He uh, He came and He uh, walked uh, uh, on earth and in the incarnation and who He was and, and how that He showed the individual. That's what they're trying to tell Him. We've seen. That's what they're telling us tonight. We've seen Him. We've seen what He done. We say He done all of this to make fellowship possible. He wants... I believe Jesus wants more, more for us as the children of God to trust Him enough to talk to Him daily and bring everything to Him and talk to Him about it and ask Him what He would have us to do. I believe there would be a lot less mistakes. I believe there would be a lot less problems. I mean, church, you take a, a, in our day, if, if men and women, boys and girls, uh, uh, if they would pray and they would pray and allow the Spirit of the Lord uh, to find them the right mate and put them together, what did he say? That, that God puts together that no man put asunder. I mean, uh, uh, the Bible's plain. The Lord, He wants us tonight to fellowship with Him. Listen, in verse 3. That which we have seen and, ha and heard declare unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Now, as John is pinning this down, he is inspired by the Spirit of God to tell us, he said, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. I think it would help. And what what preaching, what teaching, what singing does for us. Now, uh, the girls got in a, a discussion the other night, and I'm not going to go there, but they was talking about music, all kinds of music. Now, there's all kinds of beautiful songs. Earl, you, you, you sit and, and like I do from time to time and watch YouTube. And there is some music on, I mean, there's some songs on there. Lord, I love them. I just love them. I could uh, uh, pick them out, and I don't like the way they uh, promote them. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't. I don't like the I don't like the loud beat, and I don't like the uh, all the things that they do. I like just to sing and sing about Jesus, and when it gets into my heart, it's all right if my feet goes to moving and my voice goes to shouting and my hand goes to praising, but I want it to start in my heart. Now we, uh, the, the, the Lord, that's what I'm saying. These things remind us of Jesus. Uh, when when the Lord saved me, why I had all kinds of I mean I had them for years, all kind of country music. Oh, Charlie Pride, and all of them country music songs. They they wasn't one of them, as far as I know, that caused me to give up church. But you know what? Over time, the closer I got to Jesus the more I gave them up. Not that somebody told me to. I wouldn't stand today and tell a young person that they had not to do that. But I would tell them, the closer you get to Jesus, you realize if it don't uplift and edify the name of Jesus, you really don't want nothing to do with it. And that's why John's telling us our fellowship he wants us to fellowship with Him. I mean, the Lord wants us to, to, to walk with Him and talk with Him and read the Word and, and understand the Word. Oh, there's so many places in there. I mean, there are so many places just in the New Testament where individuals made the statement and they understood not. They understood not. Today, church, this is what we need to be doing. We need to get people to understand Jesus. 
We need to, to buy our lives and buy our testimony and buy our, our fellowship with Him and, and listen to uh, good music and, and, and being around the things of God and getting full of it uh, so that when we leave out, uh, it can spill over and the world can see Jesus. The world can see the love of God. The world can see that we're not perfect either. We're not perfect and never will be. But we still love the Lord. He's trying to get them to understand our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Listen. And these things write we unto you. What? That's your joy. That's your joy. This is what makes us happy tonight. There, I mean, look around. I what? We got eight or nine here tonight on a Wednesday night. And we're all tired. And we all... No. I'm here tonight because I want to be. I'm here tonight because I love being around the people of God. I'm here tonight because I like to see people stand and sing about the goodness of God and smile and talk about the goodness of God. It helps me. Something you say might enable a brother or sister in Christ to keep going for the Lord. Fellowship. Fellowship. Now listen to these next ones. Five, six, and seven. This then is a message which we have heard of him declaring to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now that little verse of Scripture in Psalms comes alive right there. If I regard iniquity. I believe myself, church, when we sin and we fail to confess and to repent of that sin, I believe it, I believe it puts a, a, a hindrance on our close walk with God. Now, you might not see it that way, and I'm not going to argue with you, but I'm going to tell you something. When I read the Bible, Peter says that, that God is a holy God. He says that uh, 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 the, the four Gospels says that, that Jesus was crucified. He took on himself the sins of, of mankind, present, past, and future. And while he was uh, hanging there, and he took those sins, nailing them to the cross, that God the Father could not look on him, and it became black over the land. Why? Because he's a holy God. And, and when we sin, he tells us in this chapter, we have an advocate, we have capability, we know when we've done something wrong. And he says to, to go ahead and confess and repent. One of the uh, best lessons I guess I ever learned was to try hard to keep my mouth shut about situations. I mean, they some of them, brother, you just better off to be quiet. And here's the way I started looking at it. If I, back in the month of March, Denise was a having surgery. They said she had lung cancer. And she was going to have surgery. Now, you know, my lifestyle, the only thing I really wanted, I, I was, I, the, 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 the bill never entered my mind. It didn't phase me. But what I wanted was somebody to say, we're praying for you. We're praying for you. I wanted to be able to look at Dole. I wanted to be able to look at everybody in the church and say, pray for Denise. Now, if I've got out here and run my mouth about somebody and it's got back to them, that might hinder a little bit. You see? You see, it always comes back to you. He says, you can't, you can't live and have sin there. If you say you have no sin. Paul said, I die daily. So we need to make sure. Listen, in verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth 
It's not in us. He's talking about the children of God. If we say we don't have any sin, we're deceiving ourselves. We come short. If there's nothing else in my life, it's in James to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. It's a sin. So all we can do is pray and say, Lord, help us day to day. Help us today, Lord, to be a light. And help us today, Lord, to tell people about Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to be strong. This letter was written to the church, to the church, to the children of God, to try to encourage us to, to pray and to fellowship and to study and to live and walk with the Lord so that we can be prepared uh, to, to, to let the light of Jesus shine. I, I don't want people to look at me and say, well, that's a preacher. And somebody else come through, and, and that's another one that got me there. Lord just brought that into my mind as those ladies came to me. You know, they're at work one night. Let's ask him. He's supposed to be a preacher. Walked over and asked me. I said, I don't know, but I'll see if I can find it. You see? You see, things like that. People, here's your Christian. Preacher or whatever. If, if, if you, people, here's your Christian. And they get in the bind. You're the one that they've grew up talking or heard talked about that can help. Just like in the Bible, every time that someone got sick, someone said, go get Jesus! Go get Jesus! That's what Christians are supposed to be able to do when someone's got a prayer request is to go get Jesus! Tell Jesus something's going on in their life. Uh, Scott Griffith has asked all to, to uh, tell people and pray because there's a situation in his life. That's why it's so important that we, we, we willingly get our sin out of the way. We willingly recognize, Lord, something's just not right now. Lord, please, this, I, I, well, I mean, I, I, I'd rather walk with you. I'd rather feel his presence as anything. <laughs> I just feel his presence as anything in the world. And he said, if we confess our sins, you notice, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's twice. Twice in just a few verses there. Where he said, don't say you've not sinned. But Lord, I've not done enough. Help me, Lord, to be stronger. Help me, Lord. The, 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 the Holy Spirit of God and Jesus and God and the Father, they're not standing and looking and waiting from uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the high points of heaven, waiting to slap us on the head every time that we do something wrong. He wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to understand. He wants us to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord and walk in the Spirit of the Lord so we can be helpful to Him and His work here on earth. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. You see, He don't want us to sin. But if you remember, He said in Hebrews, He became us. He knows. He knows all about us. It's not His will. He don't want us to. He don't want us to uh, to sin and to mess. He said, and if any man sin, you, did you catch that? My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Go to him. You know, this is this is the reason why that our life should consist so much of Bible reading and prayer and church attendance. This is the reason. So that we can get equipped. We can get equipped with what we need. This is the way God equips us. 
Maybe. And, and I've always said this. I'll just stick with it. I believe that every church service we attend in our life, I believe we get something out of that service that will enable us to be a better Christian. It might be from the Word. It might be from the singing. I've had the ladies to stand up and doll and some of them and sing, 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 and they'd put a song on my heart, and I'd go all week a humming and singing what I knew of that song. I believe you can get help. I believe that. If you, if you want help, I believe that He will give you help. And He is the perpetuation for our sins. My goodness. He is the perpetuation, the go-between, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He's there. He wants us to be clean. He wants us to be clean so that we can receive the blessings and, and fellowship with Him. That's why He wrote this, to help us to understand. Me, to understand. When you mess up, tell Him. Repent. Move on. And allow the Spirit of God to fill your heart and get you ready to be a help to somebody else. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for these few words. Thank you, Lord, for each one that made their way out. Thank you tonight, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you for all you do for us. Help us, Lord, that we'd understand and glean from your word. It would help us to be a better servant for thee. Go with us, Lord. You know all of our prayer requests and our heart and our needs. Lord, we just bring them to you tonight, Father, asking for help. Go with us now. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen.